born and raised in Florence. At some point I met at crossroads with Stefano Bemer as a shoemaker. Uh, always fancied having a pair of shoes made, but you understand that bespoke making for a university student is not exactly affordable. So uh, when we crossed roads professionally in 2007 for the first time, and then again more, more frequently from 2008 on, we started thinking of how we could possibly start cooperating between the two companies. And uh, never happened, although the training part was, was the real connection. Um, I, I got fascinated by the idea of uh, the product, the craftsmanship, the uh, sh men's shoes you get a lot of empathy for if you're, if you're into that kind of uh, idea and style. And uh, when the said opportunity of Stefan is uh, getting worse in his uh, condition um, came up, uh, my, uh, my good friend Tom Tommaso that was working with, uh, with him at the time uh, mentioned that maybe we, it was time for me to get more involved in the business uh, and uh, here we are today. Stefano uh, started, um, as, as he said, from a hole in the shoe. Uh, he had a nice pair of shoe that he liked and uh, then the sole got just broken and he wanted to fix it because it was his favorite pair and decided instead of fixing it uh, in, a, in, a, in a workshop, he would do it himself. And he had such a pleasure in the accomplishment that, the, that, that he could get out of it right, on a personal level that he decided that would have been his profession. So there was, he was 18 and in 1983 he started his, his workshop to repair uh, shoes in Greve in Chianti. Little, he, he went a long way from that little adventure, he moved to Florence shortly after, uh, decided that he had a very clear idea of what shoemaking, Italian shoemaking should be like in terms of style, construction, uh, quality, durability, uh, even the relationship with the client. He had a very strong idea which we're very loyal to and um, I want to say by the beginning of the 90s, he was already known to be one of the emerging shoemakers uh, for sure in Italy. Then uh, he apparently hit a soft spot in the Japanese market and uh, Japanese market is very demanding, very picky. But by the time they recognize your quality, then you become a, a god in shoemaking and Stefano made it to that level. We train 12 students every six months, uh, six hours a day, full time. It's a, it's a very intense training, and but we, through that training, we're able to select, choose, and retain the best students in each class. Through that, we grew in capacity of production a number of times. I mean, Stefano was making, I think, at best three or four hundred pairs of shoes at the time, and now we're almost hitting 3,000. So it's uh, it's been a uh, it's been a growth, but it's organic. So everything is in-house uh, and we have full control over each single pair, which is, for me, it's crucial to, to delivering the quality that you promise and that you profess. This should be the quintessential Italian shoe. And Italians are known for the balance and beauty of what they, they do. So it is long and, uh, and it has a sexy silhouette, unlike at an English shoe. Uh, but not as long as awkward like a French one. So, uh, and I'm not saying this, and I apologize with all my fellow makers, but um, it is indeed a matter of balance. I think it's, uh, first of all, a matter of proportion in the last, and Stefano devoted a number of years to developing the, the, the two roots that we still use for, for all of our bespoke and most of our ready-to-wear. Um, and it's also a matter of taste. I do believe that a, that a house, a company, should have a, a style on its own and should be visible throughout the collections and throughout the years. Uh, so we decided that we wouldn't do or produce anything that we wouldn't wear. Uh, there's, there's two or three of us styling and uh, so if we don't like it, we don't make it. 
I want to keep the company rather small. I want to keep the capacity production in-house. I want to remember the clients and, and, and know what we deliver to each of them. Uh, obviously, there's a growth for us ahead, uh, but I don't want to cross the threshold that has made some companies lose the grip over quality. Uh, I've seen it myself as a consumer. Um, no, I'm not making names, so uh, don't ask, but I've seen names and, and brands that we're all familiar with change in quality and uh, losing the soul and I don't want to do that to our company. Um, we're working on a side project uh, that would probably try to bring some more of the Florentine style and look into the market. Uh, and that involves tailoring. Um, so I think we can do something about giving our take on uh, on tailoring from a very Florentine point of view. We we want to be loyal to the city that's been well so good to us. So um, and and we love the balance of of the fashion that 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 this city has expressed since the 50s. Um, so we'll stick to that and um, and remain rather human size.